things happen in life that are definitely not planned, definitely unscripted, definitely not what you expected, but you have a choice. This is the only thing that you have in your life. You could choose your reaction to everything. And that is all you have. That's all you have. Hello, and thank you for joining me here on Hope to Recharge podcast, the podcast that's designed to break the stigma around mental health and to create some hope and inspiration and give some practical tips to those that are struggling with mental health, whether it's from personal stories to break the stigma or some advice from professionals in the mental health community. Whether you are struggling with mental health on your own or you know a loved one that is struggling, we are here to support you and to create a community so you you know you are not alone. The road to recovery can be difficult and challenging. At Hope to Recharge, we believe that in mental health, together is always better. I'm your host, Matana. Thank you for joining me here today. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Are you looking for online therapy? Are you stuck at home like everyone else? High stress, high anxiety, worried about the future, trying to navigate everything, have a lot of worries, had a lot of emotional roller coaster rides up and down, just like me. BetterHelp.com is one phone call away, one Zoom call away, one text away. It's an online platform for therapy. It's so perfect for now, for coronavirus, for what people are going through now. We can reach out and get the perfect therapist that meets our needs. Don't wait. Check them out. See if you can find somebody. Don't struggle. They're so affordable. They are so affordable. You're sitting at home. Every therapist is working online now. Reach out and get help you need. If you are struggling, don't struggle in silence. I am so grateful that they are giving us 10% off the first month so you can get affordable access to therapy. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash hope to recharge. Betterhelp.com forward slash hope to recharge, start your wellness, get help, get support you need. Hello, and thank you for joining me here again on Hope to Recharge podcast. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for choosing our podcast to spend time with on your free time. Everybody is short on time and every person that takes the opportunity to listen and tune in to Hope to Recharge, we are so grateful for your support. Today is the second half of my interview with Malky Hirsch, Kiss the Kosher Cook. The first part was by far far the most popular episode on Hope to Recharge in the history of Hope to Recharge. We are six weeks into our topic on grief on Hope to Recharge podcast. So we had already a month and a half of discussing different kinds of grief and working through grief, life after grief, a very, very intense but inspiring month the outpour of the people that are connecting on the topic of grief is something that I never, it never dawned on me that it, this topic is so needed and so wanted and there's a thirst for it. And I'm so grateful that Hope to Recharge put aside, it was in the beginning a month and that we realized that, that we need so much more on healing the grief and, and processing grief. So I'm so grateful that we had the amazing guests on the Hope to Recharge podcast to share with us their story of grief, their hope during grief, their gratitude through grief, their hard times through grief, how they came out of constant grief into living all this in the past six weeks. And we have a few more episodes to come. And today you're tuning into the second half of my interview with Malky Hirsch of What was it like to go back to life after losing her husband? So sudden, so sudden. What a powerful story. What a powerful story. We are going to release after this episode, we are going to release in the next week or 10 days or maybe two weeks, a bonus episode that is going to be an episode of me interviewing Maki on her first big milestone in her life, in her family after her husband passed away. And this is going to be a special episode, a lot of tears, a wow episode. So stay tuned. It's going to be a bonus episode. It's not going to be available for anyone on the free list of Hope to Recharge episodes. It's going to be a paid episode because it's a special episode. And it's going to be for those that listened already to the first two episodes of Malki, which is 115. And this is going to be episode number 17. 
So stay tuned if you are interested to hearing that episode, which is going to be coming up soon. Stay tuned. It's going to be coming through your email. So you have to register. You're going to have to register. Go to hope to recharge.com and subscribe to our email list because it's going to be coming through there if you want to hear all about Malky's journey and the incredible transformation and what it was like to have her first milestone with her son's bar mitzvah and and the before, the during, the after the bar mitzvah. She walks us through it. So hope you enjoy this next part of this episode of Malki's journey to healing, walking through grief, and let us know how it inspired you to elevate you through your pain and your sadness and your grief and your struggles. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy this episode. I want to know, what do you do with the fast forward? Like um, one of the things somebody said, one of, one of the people that I interviewed that lost his daughter very early on, he said, when you find, he found out that his daughter was sick very early on, and then it took nine years till she passed away. But for nine years, he knew that she's going to not make it because it was yeah. something that you don't survive even three years, but she lived nine. And he said, when you find out something like that happens, you, the first thing you're grieving is your dreams. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So what do you do when you, when you're like looking down, like your son's bar mitzvah, the wedding, or you don't even go there because it's just too hard. You know, it's very funny because I had this idea of like, you know, what things would be like. And I'm such a silly person. I would even assume that like the bar mitzvah would have been a certain way because right now the bar mitzvah is going to be in my house, you know? (laughs) Is it soon? It's in June. This June? In a month? In a month. In a month? So can I just tell you something? Can I just tell you something? I know this is awful to say. Maybe I'm going to take it off the record. Oh, if you're telling me what I already think in my head, that it's a blessing and I'm so excited. Yeah, for sure. Um, that, 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 that the entire grade didn't have a bar mitzvah with him and God created this pandemic that your son should have a bar mitzvah at home just like everybody else. Do you know that my son said- Is that awful to say? No. It's not. It's not. My oh my God. Like, but that's the blessings that you talk about. For sure. Yeah. You can look for this stuff all the time. You can be like, oh my God, this exactly what, this is why the timing is now. This is why the timing is now. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's possible. David said Kaddish the whole year. Now for a 12 year old that isn't bar mitzvah to commit to saying Kaddish for his father. Wow. Every day with a minion. Can oh my I tell God. you the things that we had to do, the places we had to go to make sure, planning trips to different locations in the world, making sure we had minyanim. Uh, like, it's not normal. Uh, the week of my, fa- my husband's yard site, which was his, his unveiling, was the week that COVID came out. And my son was able to say Kaddish. He was uh, able to finish. The whole yeah. year. And then COVID started the next week, right after Purim. The next week. The next week. The next week they canceled all the minion, all the, 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 oh my goodness. Yeah. And my friend texted me. She said to me, do you think it's a coincidence that it happened just now? I said, there oh, is no coincidence in life. There's no my... None of us. Okay, is- wait, we have to give an explanation what this is for the okay. non-Jews or okay. for Jews okay. that don't know yeah. what Kaddish is. Yeah. Do you want to give a little bit of so, a background? So, so yeah. So Kaddish is something that uh, a loved one, a relative says for somebody that dies to elevate the soul, the departing soul of that person that's lost. And in our religion, it is a common thing for a year for uh, at every prayer, which is we have morning, afternoon, and evening, that they, they pray with a congregation of 10 men or more, and they say a prayer to elevate the soul of the departed. And, and it's, it's every, day. Son, every day, it's every day, so every day, every day, three times a day, three That's times it. a day. So my 12 year old son, who's a baby, he's, he's a child at 12 years old, had the maturity and the determination that adults five times his age can, can't figure out to do for their, right. for their fathers. He was determined to, to preserve this man's memory person that he was closest to, that he was going to do this for him, that this was his last gift. This is the last thing he can do for his father. And he was going to do it. He did it in Disney. He did it when he went skiing. He did it in Israel. He did it on the plane. He wouldn't not, he did it in, in Barclay Center one night. Don't even ask what I had to do. To and it's it. not easy because he has to get 10 people together no. to say it. It's not like he can walk to the side and say it alone in a room. No. He has to get 10 no. men no. 
over the age of 13, 10 men over the age of 13 in one room together to say it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And a week later. Not even a week. It was a few days. A few days after the the year, the first year. The first year. So he completed the whole 365. Yeah. And then the community stopped having the gatherings. You weren't allowed to gather anymore. The virus, exactly. And he wouldn't be able to say it with and 10 I people. Can't, honestly, I can't even express to you, thinking about what that would feel like for him, that heartbreak, that just A second death. That would be a second death for him. Yeah. yeah. If he couldn't finish those last week, that last week, yeah. if, it were, if COVID started a week before, week before. Yeah. in New York and, and the rabbis would cancel, you would have to just move 10 people into your house in order to prevent to another death. death. Seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You would have to do it. Mm-hmm. I agree. So now you're asking about things to be thankful for. Is that silly to ask? Like, why would you be thankful for that? But oh my God. Yes. Think about what that did for my son. Wow. Think about, think about the pride he has that he was able to do this for his father. Wow. Incredible. That last love story between a father and a son. And he was able to do that for his father. And if this was happening then, and it wouldn't have happened, how could I even comfort him? How could I even, what would I have to tell him to make him feel better? I don't know. Right. You know, so I'm so thankful. I'm thankful right. that, that this happened. That this worked out. Exactly. So that's what, that's what you were telling me. I texted Malki, I think three or four weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I was having such a hard time because my closest friend's father passed away from COVID without mm-hmm. saying goodbye. We couldn't hug her. We couldn't go to the funeral. It was just the most awful experience. Mm-hmm. And I texted Maki and I said, is there gratitude within grief? Like, tell me, can you express, is there gratitude? Because I live with gratitude because it's my comfort. It helps me get through a very dark day of depression. Yeah. It actually healed me from depression. And I live with gratitude. But then deep, 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 deep sadness comes and you're like, Wait, where's the gratitude? So I quickly texted, uh, I texted Maki and I'm like, Maki, can grief go with gratitude together? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's so crazy how grief is this, grief is, is a feeling that like you'll never shake. Once you're introduced to grief, it never leaves you. It's like an emotion. It's an emotion. Grief right. is an emotion, right? It's like sadness. It's happiness. Right. It's everything but it encompasses everything. Also, what grief does is it, it elevates all of your feelings. It, it, it enhances every feeling that you have. It enhances sadness. It makes you sadder than you've ever been sad. Like right. there's never been sadness the way you're sad after grief. Right. right. So does the same thing with gratitude. It makes you more grateful for everything right. that you have. It, it makes you happier than you've ever had. Than you've ever- it's crazy. It's so interesting. It, it, it is. But I it, think it, it's a choice, Monkey. I don't think everybody gets to where you got. I think you made a choice that you wanted to be happier when yes. the happy moments come. I'm a very, I yeah. want to be grateful when the grateful yeah. moments come. Yeah. I choose to see it on a higher level in order to be able, right, in order Absolutely to get choice. through the sadness, of in course. order to get through it without falling apart. Like you, you made that choice. It would take way less work for me to say, I'm giving up. Right. I'm done. You know what? Let me know when my kids are grown. I'll try to apologize to them for being a crappy mother then. <laughs> Leave right. me alone. <laughs> Leave right, me in my room. Right. I can't right. do this right now. It's so much more work to do it right, but right. the payoff is so much greater. It's amazing. And you're feeling the feeling that you have, the accomplishment that you have for setting your life back on track. There's nothing like it. And it's a blessing. You're incredible for saying that. And I'm, I'm grateful for meeting you because you really, like I, that we, I, I, again, God always puts the right people in your life exactly when you needed it. Even though I didn't have grief at that time, but I was feeling that God forbid, if I lose someone that I love, I don't think I'll ever be able to survive. I, because I knew how dark darkness is from my depression, sure. my fear of going back into a dark place. And I know that grief is worse than any depression. I know. I like, because from people that I spoke to, grief is like, and I'm like, worse than where I was, I'm never going to survive what am I going to do? And after like, and there were a few deaths that week of people that I knew. And I was like, how am I going to survive? And I was obsessing. I was obsessing. I was obsessing. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And I kept on saying, Ari, and my husband was sick that week. And I said, Ari, get out of bed. And he never, ever, ever, ever stays in bed ever. 
and it was yeah. our anniversary. Yeah. And I said, Ari, get out of bed. You cannot be sick. I don't want to see. And I was, I was nervous. It was just right before they were talking about COVID coming to maybe coming traveling. I think it went to Italy already. And I'm like, all right, get out of bed. Get out of bed. I couldn't drink coffee in the morning. And I said, and I felt myself depleted. And I'm like, oh my yeah. God, I'm going into depression because my mind was doing a job on me, a big job yeah. of I'm not yeah. going to survive. And that's when I reached out to you. And I said, like, tell me about grief. What is grief? Like, what, what, how did you overcome it? That's why I was like obsessing over it because I wanted to hold on to hope. Yeah. That, because grief is going to come to everyone at some point. We're going to lose somebody. Right. Like, right. Of course. Everybody experiences grief. Just yeah. some people yeah. experience it in a less shocking way. Yeah, for and, sure. Right. And I, yeah. and, and like, it was, it was, it was comforting to me. I know it's awful to say, but it was comforting to me to say, to hear you say you get through it one day, one moment at a time. And it's a process and, um, and I'm okay. I remember you said, no, I'm okay. And I remember you said to me, like, please don't pity me. Don't pity me. And I'm like, no, your courage. What do you mean your courage? But like those words were in my mind. I'm like, what should I not do? Because I don't want to, the last thing you want to do for somebody that lost a loved one is do say the wrong thing, act the wrong way. And you really don't know what the right thing is to do, especially yeah. if you don't know what it was like, if you were never in their shoes. You know. So what would you give advice to somebody that like me, that mm -hmm. really, like I have sympathy. I can't have empathy for grief because I haven't been there. But like, what do we say when we have nothing to say? When there's nothing to say, what do you do? Like, I'm sorry for your loss. I feel like those are the worst words to say. Worst. Very generic. Awful. <laughs> what? Very generic, like meaningless. Generic. Like, I'm sorry for your loss. Really? That's what you're going to say when I'm dying? What did you want? Or did you want to be left alone? What did you want? Um, did I, no, I didn't actually want to be left alone. I'm very, for me, I need people. Right. Everybody's different though. I mean, right. I've, I've, I've reached out to women upon request of other friends of theirs in an attempt because they're so they're 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 helpless their friends don't know what to do for them so they're trying to mm -hmm. just like oh Malky she's done this let her do right. it you know right. I've reached out to women that weren't ready to talk and they're not ready to communicate and they don't trust people that are not in their circle um for me I craved it I craved connection being friends with people that went through exactly what I went through with ages right. of the ages of kids that I have because right. they were going to be my role models they were okay. going to be the blueprint that I needed to get through it everybody's different like this woman that called me on Friday who literally reached out to me she lost her husband three weeks ago on Pesa okay reached out to me and she was just like desperate to know that she's going to be okay and I, I said to her I'm telling you right now I hear the way you're speaking right now and I hear myself in you a year ago and I'm telling you right now, I promise you, you have my word. You are going to be good. You're going to be okay. Nobody wow. else can say this to you because nobody else has been there. You are going to be okay. Wow. You're how did you okay. know? What if I she just, won't be okay? I just know she will be. I just, okay. because the questions that she was asking me, okay. the things that she wanted to know, she wanted to know about her kids, if they were going to be okay, if they're going to grow up okay. I was like, you will be fine. Your kids are young. You're going to tell them this and this and that. And you're going to do this and this and that. We're going to do this together. I'm going to help you. And I text her every day and I check on her every day. And don't ask somebody, how are you? Don't ask them that. You say, how are you today? How are you oh, right Oh, brilliant. Yeah. How are you brilliant. today? How are you now? In this moment, how are you now? That's it. It has to, everything has to be like. Micro. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very minimal. Uh, and when people pass you in the supermarket, what do you, what, what, like that, know your story. They don't really know you. You, you know them from the gym, you know them from around. They know you because you're, first of all, you're a famous person. You're like, you're, a, you're really famous. What do you want them to say to you? Or do you rather them just leave you alone? Strangers. So, no, I, I actually never want them to leave me alone because I know that they're always thinking something. And I really prefer if they're thinking something that they come up to me and have the courage to say how they feel. Because I don't know, like it could, it could make my day. It could make me feel like maybe I was having a really hard day before that. And she comes up to me and she says, the struggles that you've gone through and the things that you say are inspirational to people like me who have way less to deal with in their life. But you give me a reason that I know that if you could do this, I could do this. And who doesn't want to hear that? That's awesome. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, but what if you don't give? What if you're not a giver like you are? And what if you're just somebody that lost 
somebody and you're just going through life. You're, you're not putting yourself out there like you. What do you say to somebody that lost a loved one? Is there any advice that you can give to people that just don't have words? Is there any advice I can give somebody that is quieter than me? <laughs> yeah. That they're not so sharing their emotions and their journey. I know. But you, I'm you do sure. meet them. You meet them in the supermarket. Let's say someone that lost a child to suicide. What do you say to them? Oh my gosh. That's hard. I think that for me, when I approach people, obviously in the past year, they take it differently than let's say if you would or somebody else would that doesn't have an experience or has lived through kind of like that kind of loss. All I can offer people that have gone through loss is my life experience and myself and my help. That's all I can say. You know, I could tell them what has helped me, the books that I've read, the things that I've done, the therapies that I've done, the self-care that I've done, the things that help my children, because I'm not a mental health counselor and I've never studied this before. Right. All I know is what has put me on the right track. So I don't shy away from people that have lost, obviously. I'm very upfront and I tell them, I will reach out to you. And if you get annoyed and tell me to stop, that's okay with me. But until you do, I'm going to be checking on you every day. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's it. You know? Wow. And I do. I do. Wow. Do you it. want people to check in on you? It doesn't get overwhelming. I mean, I think that in the beginning, it was a novelty. I mean, it was like, oh my God, Malky, 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 Malky. Right. And... You know, with other things that happen in the world and, and life and now Corona, I'm right. old news. I don't got nobody checking on me anymore. <laughs> I check Everybody. on you sometimes. I, you check. I just, I'm afraid to. I'm afraid like ever since you said, don't pity me. I'm like, every time I'm going to check on her, she's going to think I'm pity, but I just don't, I just you think about I you. Actually, I actually, I, it's because I have this, like this, I'm very sensitive to that. I don't want people to feel like bad for me. That's my whole fear. So I, I once had a friend who told me, like, she's like, anytime you don't have a place for a Shabbos or a meal that you want to right. cook, please come to me. And I was like, right. can you not pity me? And she's like, I love you. It's exactly. Not you. Exactly. Like, and I felt like an idiot. And that shut me up. I was like, okay, oh, good. Okay. A good. I'm happy she had the, good, <laughs> the right words to say, because that's what it is. It's care. It's love. Yeah. yeah. They, we want to hold space for something that we don't understand, but we right. want to just be a vessel to hold space with you that you that, that, that you don't right. have to do this alone and know that we care because we really but do until, care. It's not out of pity. But until, listen, until you are the biggest news to ever hit Woodmere, okay? And right. you get those looks, you see those looks from people right. Right. and they're trying to make it a little bit subtle, but you see them looking at you and they, you see them whispering to the person next to them. So what are you supposed to do? I don't shut do up. Look the other way. Like what? Say hi. No, how are you? Me, I'm how? just saying until you're in that position, like I've been, mm -hmm. you just don't know how that feels. And so Awful. you're going to lash out at people when they say, can you come for Shabbos? And I'm like, I don't need you. I got it. No, you're allowed to lash out and say, well, shut well, up. Don't well, ever call course. me. Of course so you have funny. the, you have the past to say anything, even to the nicest people that are coming. I am well aware. By but the way, I, <laughs> very nice. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But but on the other hand, I want you to understand that it's really because we love and care, care and not because we pity. Some people that pass you probably in the supermarket, they'll probably say, oh, I pity her. But I don't know if they have another language, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. At this point, a year later, I don't think that I'm met with that type, that kind of reaction anymore, that kind right. of I don't think it's pity. I think at this point, it's more like, wow. wow. By the way, I think it's wow. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, wow. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> right. You know, exactly. I've done a lot. I've, in, in this past year, I've done a lot. I've mm -hmm. done a lot. I've put my face on social media. Right. I started working for companies, promoting their products. I did a lot more beforehand. I was oh, always you weren't this public before? No. Uh, no wait, way. wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's go down that path for a few seconds, for a few mm -hmm. minutes, okay? Yeah. So I think I have to have you on again because I have too many questions. Or maybe sure. just when I come back, I'm going to come to a very long cup of coffee. Maybe I'll kidnap you to somewhere that we no can just problem. disconnect. I have too many questions. Okay, so so what were you, What what what's your love affair with cooking? Why are you oh called Kiss the Kosher Cook? Okay, so I'll tell you the truth. Um, I worked in the city. Um, I was a... I was a 
Okay, I was an agent. I represented hair, makeup, and stylists in a photography agency. I did marketing for them. I did um, people that did set design, food styling for like editorials, for like, you know, advertising, pharmaceutical, car. I've always been very good. Like, I'm a very good communicator. I'm very good over the phone. I'm very good, you know, like I'm very okay. articulate. Okay. Um, so it always worked like in my favor. I worked there until I had my first son mm-hmm. and then conducive to like, having a full-time city job where my hours were nuts. Living with mental illness can be full of pain, frustration, and anguish. At times, it can feel like you are completely alone. Well-meaning loved ones may not understand what you are going through and might not be able to offer the support you need. Finding the right source of support is crucial to your journey of healing. While we always encourage you to seek appropriate medical and psychological help, Adding someone to your team who has been where you are can provide a much needed shoulder to lean on. Matana knows what it is like to feel debilitating anxiety and through her own journey of more than a decade living with mental illness, she has spoken with hundreds of others navigating their own anxiety and depression. Matana is not a therapist or a doctor, but has been able to partner with many individuals like yourself, creating a strategy toward mental, physical, and emotional well-being. One-on-ones with Matana are self-paced conversations allowing you to move forward at a comfortable pace. She'll work with you as you discover your own path and the steps that are right for you. To schedule a free 30-minute consultation with Matana, head over to hopetorecharge.com forward slash free. That's hopetorecharge.com forward slash F-R-E-E. Or you can click the link in today's show notes. And now let's get right back to Matana and today's conversation. So I decided to uh, focus on real estate. I got my real estate license. Mm -hmm. And then I decided because I had all this free time that I never had before. And I had a baby at home. And then I had two babies at home. Mm -hmm. that I was going to take up cooking. So I opened a Facebook page and I needed a name. And um, a producer that I work with in the city She's like, you remember Kiss the Cook? All those aprons that have Kiss the Cook on it. She goes, but you're oh. kosher. So do Kiss the Kosher Cook. And I was like, oh, I'm like, that's oh, really cute. That is so I did that. That was it. That's the whole thing. Yeah. And so, that's when you started, when your second child yeah. was born? Yeah. Yeah. But it was really like small scale. It was Facebook. I only cooked. I didn't bake. I never knew how to bake. I started okay. baking about five years ago. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so really, all it really is, is that, I've always been artsy. I'm very into, I'm just, I've always painted. I've always, I was really, you know, my mother's an artist. I'm an artist. You have the eye to detail and beauty. Yeah. So for me, it's just a, a, um, an extension of being artistic. Cooking Mm -hmm. and baking is, is, is an art, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I really immersed myself in learning how to do that stuff. And it became something I loved to do. Then I realized that like this Facebook, Instagram thing is like a way to have a platform and make yourself like that niche. Like this is your thing. Now, back then I wasn't interested in, you know, getting to that kind of like, you know, large scale following where I was able to like have companies hire me to promote products. Um, got to the point in the past year that only in the past year. Yeah. Yeah. No, wait, what, what, what was it last year? Did you? Oh, before my husband? I, I, I would do things, but like I never was approached by companies to like promote their stuff. No. Were you a blogger? Were you? I was a like, blogger. Yeah, I had like 10,000 followers, but it, it definitely shot up now. And now I'm at 20. Wait, so you, so you would blog about the food and people would ask you for the recipes? I would blog about dinner. I would blog about, you know, being invited to restaurants for their new menu, for their new seasonal right. things. Right. But I wasn't asked to uh, go to grocery stores and promote their, their store and have, like, I have a, I have a lot of interaction with my, my followers on Instagram and my right. engagement rate is pretty high. And right. so when I story something, people respond and they, they wow. love it. I'm also responding to them. It's a good... Right. Friendship. Right. I have a friendship with these people, you know? A so all sudden, job Instagram. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh so God. all of a sudden I have a lot of people reaching out to me that own stores, that own, right. you know, different products that are making certain products, all mm-hmm. food related. Cause that's where I really want to be, you know? Okay. And they asked me to either check out their stuff, taste their stuff, 
be a brand ambassador, you know, work for a grocery store and like shop exclusively there and shop right. their aisles. So people see that live near there. Oh my gosh, they have everything right. I want. Right. You know, right. this right. is right. It's information. It's, it's a commercial. That's your own TV show. Wow. You know? And it only I mean. happened in the last year. Yeah. With the whole grieving, yes. you yes. found space. Wait, I need to process this. Distraction. You're grieving <laughs> five little yeah. children, a baby. Yeah. Um, and you blow up your business. Yeah. Yeah. You literally blew up your business in a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beforehand, no one was asking you to blog about that. No. You're joking. I had products sent to my house, but it wasn't like this. No. Mm -mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. Where do you see your future? What do you want to do in the future? No, I have no idea. It? Do I think about it? I just, I honestly, for me, it's really a very, like, I love how organic it's been. Listen, right. I'm not going to lie that it wasn't jumpstarted because people heard about Malky, Malky Hirsch that lost her husband and people were always visiting my site. And I think what really strengthened the people that followed me was the fact that they wanted to see what would happen next. And so when I started posting about the things that I always did, the stuff I always made, the stuff mm -hmm. that comforted me and continues to make me happy after mm -hmm. this happened, it strengthened them and made them feel like, oh my God, she's going to be okay. And also you gave them a story. You gave them yeah. a story. An yeah, ending to the good. story. You didn't just cut the story in the middle and no. send disappearing. No. no. Yeah. And you inspired them and probably you have tons of followers that are going through hardships and they're oh like, God, oh, yeah. I'm going to... I get messages all the time from people. Yeah. 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 So like it, it was not only um, not about food. business. It, yeah. No. It's no. about no. creating your, your hope through and moving on and, and evolving and the set, the next chapter of life. Yes. And with your, and, with your and, audience. And showing people that like, yeah, things happen in life that are definitely not planned, definitely unscripted, definitely not what you expected, but you have a choice. This is the only thing that you have in your life. You could choose your reaction to everything. And that is all you have. That's all you have. Right. right. Wow. I didn't know that. By the way, I didn't know that at all. At all. Do you have a cookbook? No. I, but you, that, that, I'm sure it's, that, it's somewhere in your mind hovering Maybe. somewhere. It's funny because I, you know, a, friend, a mutual friend of ours wants me to write another type of book. Not, not a cookbook. Not a book about food. But a, a memoir? Book, what? A, a memoir? A book, a book about, a book about my, my past, the past year, about me traveling through grief and coming out, or not coming out, but tr just getting into sure. a more comfortable space where I could breathe and live and raise my kids and right. expand my business and be happy. So, right. you know, please yeah. do. When you're ready, yeah. please do. You'll be a source of comfort. You'll be the next book um, that everybody gives out probably as comfort, you know? <laughs> I hope so. I want to ask you um, probably three more questions before I let you go. I know I took a lot of time. Where did you meet your husband? It was a blind date. It was so like anticlimactic. <laughs> it was like... How I old were you? What? I was actually... I wasn't... I was, I was 24. Um, I, so I was working in the city at the super cool job and it was the first time in my life that I felt like set apart from all the other girls, you know, dating the way we date, you know, because it's so, it's so unappealing to like mm -hmm. go on blind dates, you know, mm -hmm. cause you're sitting across the sky and you're like, clearly this person is not for me and I have to endure an entire night sitting across from him. How am I going to get through it? How am I going to do it? You know, at this point in my life, I felt like you should be thankful to be out with me. I exactly. am a treat. And that was the exactly. first time in my life. And by the way, that kind of feeling is infectious. People love that. They, yes. They're drawn to it. Yes. So for the first time in my life, in my dating life at 24 years old, you know, and that preceded four years of me dating, you know, that I felt like a speck on the floor. Right. The first time in my life, I was like, I am so much cooler than you. And I'm going to tell you right. You, you have a couple <laughs> hours. I'm going to tell you about my job. It is so, so cool. Okay. So I'm out with this guy. He works in computers. He's like, he's never met anybody like me in my life, in, in his life. Right. right. I talk the entire night and he's just like, oh my God. Like he, and you know, it's so funny. Like for me, it's always been like the, you always, as a woman, I always think that you want to be in a position where like the guy likes you right, right, right. From the start. Right. Right. He wants to marry you. 
it, you take some time. You take a little bit more time than he does, but it's right. nice that he's there waiting for you for when right. you're ready. You know, right. so that's what it was like, you know, my mother's friend from elementary school set us up and it was like, oh, three months. And that was it. You know, uh, the oh. first date I remember thinking to myself, first of all, he's opened to a really beautiful restaurant. Second of all, I was like, okay, I'll have the chicken. And he's like, no, no, no. Okay. I haven't told you this beforehand because I don't know you, but this is how I dine. We have a drink. We have an appetizer. We could share it if you want. I don't want to make okay. you uncomfortable. Then we have a main and then we have dessert. And I wow. was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And by oh, the way, <laughs> exactly. And by the way, for 14 years, that's how we, that's how we ate out. Wow. That's how, it was always like that. He was such a consistent person throughout his life. Always wow. consistent. He liked just, fine stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He had good taste across the board. I'm flattered. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he was just, he was a huge, he was a giver. He was just a giver. Wow. He was a huge giver. Where you did know? he grow up? Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, yeah. Is is his are his parent are his parents alive? His father died. Uh, it'll be five years in Shavuos mm-hmm. this May. Um, my God, we're in May, right? Yeah, Shavuos is soon. It's gonna yeah. be five years, and um, yeah, that was. I, I remember thinking to myself, "This is such injustice. How can God do this?" Like right. he is, he was diagnosed with with pancreatic cancer. It was very very quick. It was very quick. Wow. I thought to so, myself, six year old man, how can he do this? How can God do this to us? Right. And then God knows that I know this, that I know this is going to happen. But wow. Yeah. Wow. And what's his mother like? His mother is a, the strongest woman I've ever met. Hmm. Interesting that your husband uh, married his mother type of kind of girl. I think that, I think that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So That's, did you think that she raised him properly, how to treat a woman? I think that, I think my husband saw certain things in his parents' marriage that he was like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. then certain, and then there were certain things that he was like, I'm going to do that. Okay. But I think kids do that all the time. They just take little things apart. You do the same thing with your parents, with your, with your spouse, with your friends. Right. Right. You take the best qualities and you take the worst qualities. And you're like, I really don't want to like do that. And I want to do this. And right. I want to emulate that. I think it's human nature, you know, right. his mother, his mother. But as far as child rearing him and his siblings, you don't get better. No, wow. there's there's not better quality out there. So he was a prince, a prince. He, 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 it wasn't, he wasn't a prince because he, he treated his parents with like the greatest respect. He was the most incredible son. It was a mutual thing. You know, wow. they just, they just loved each other so deeply and they gave of each other so much. Like amazing. You know, I just, good lucky. God lent him to you for how many years? 14 years, 15 years. Yeah. 14. Wow. You were gifted him to, to show you what, what it means to be a real human. That's the best type. Everybody's married to a human. Usually they're really sucky. They're really not great. Right. right. But I had the best. I had the best. Wow. Wow. So you probably feel lucky in a way that you were gifted 14 years of like an awesome human being to be your best friend, your leader, your cheerleader, the yeah. father for your children. Yeah. Wow. I wish I knew him. He was incredible. The only thing I regret him. is not telling him enough. And I know yeah. that if I would have told him, not knowing what would have happened, he would have looked at me like I was crazy and been like, right. uh, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> right. You need right. money? <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Simon, what would you like? Right, <laughs> right. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and what a lesson to learn. What a lesson to cherish those little simple moments of life. Wow. So to be married to such a prince, such a prince of a guy like that should be a role model for what humans should be, children should be, spouses should be, yeah. colleagues should be. How can you ever think? I don't know if you're thinking but like at all, like do you, because you said before that somebody came to your, sh- to, to your grieving home and said uh, the first week of uh, the Shiva and they said to you, I got married, I, got, I moved on. So, and you were very hopeful to hear that. Yes. Can, and can you even fathom loving somebody else? You don't have to answer this. Not the same way, maybe. I feel like, I feel like it has to be. It has to be. I don't think God intended somebody my age in my standing in life to be alone. It's right. just not. Right. I won't do it. I won't do it. Right. That's, that's the real strength. 
to have loved and lost and to know that you can love again, Absolutely. but differently, but differently. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. And I, I look forward to it. I want it. Oh. <laughs> Very early on, even before it was like, you know, everyone was like, don't talk about this right now. <laughs> right. I was like, I'm not, I'm 38 years old. I'm not right. doing it alone. I'm not right. doing this alone. Right. You know how lonely every night is? It's <laughs> awful. It is. You talk to him before I talk you to scream him at him and say, how dare you leave me? How I irresponsible. I do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah. And it's comforting to know that he's listening and he's there and you can Absolutely. cry with him, to him, yell at him, smile, giggle, look up to him. I ask him to pull certain strings. I ask him yeah. to like, you know, look over the kids if I right. can't be there. And yeah. Protect us. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's in a higher, higher playing field right now. You know, he's closer to like the important people. Right. He has an in and I expect him to pull strings for me and to make sure we're okay. Yeah. Maki, wow. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say besides like, it's amazing how far you came and, and your courage is is contagious. And I know that, that you're going to help so many women in life, so many people in life, so many children in life to just see hope through your eyes and through your journey. And, and to be able to turn the page or turn the chapter and say, okay, let's, let's just take a small step. Like just take a small, small step, not see the end of the path, not see the whole GPS. How long does it take to get to upstate New York? Three and a half hours? No. What's the next left turn I need to take? What's the next Absolutely. right? One step at a time. Yes, there's a great saying. I forgot, I'm trying to figure out who wrote it. I'll, I'm sure it'll come to me after we're off this, but he said, the only way around is through. You have to go through. You have to walk through it. That's it, you know? It's painful and it's hard to feel all that, but you need to. Just like that smart woman said when she came to you the first day from High Lifeline and said, yeah. don't, don't, don't numb your pain. You have don't to walk through it, walk through it, survive it. Sure. And when you survive, you feel like a warrior and you feel, oh, oh wow. It's like running a marathon and you're yeah. thinking, or having a baby. And right. you're like, I cannot believe I did that. I right. cannot believe I did that, but I did it. Right. It's empowering. And right. it gives you this renewed sense of like yourself, like, oh right. my God. I right. didn't think I could do that. And I did right. it. Right. Imagine what else I could do. Absolutely. And it's exciting in a way. Like if I got through this one year and you can write three to five books on this one year, can you imagine what the rest of my life is going to bring me? Right. Even though everybody would rather just give me the ordinary life, no books, no nothing. Uh, just give me, give me my ordinary life uh, back, my boring uh, <laughs> ordinary life. Right. Absolutely. But, yeah. but looking at it and say, okay, fine. This is where I am now. So if this is how far I came, where am I going to be in five years? Where am I going to be in 10 years? Yeah. Like it's, it's and really also, taking whatever is given to you, whatever is given to you and saying, I'm going to make the best out of whatever I have, whatever, whatever you give to me, whatever you choose to give me, it's going to be good in some way. And I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure it out. So I have one more big question and then I do my final question that I ask everyone. Okay. Maki, what do you do with all those answers that you will never get? What happened to him that day? How did he pass out? Was he sick? Did he need help? Uh, did anybody see? Could I have survived? Could I have saved him? Was it because he was out for two nights and he didn't sleep? All I'm these questions that you will never have answers to. What do you do with them? I usually just let, I, 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 I don't let that kind of stuff like eat, eat me up. I really don't. You know, these are things that will never practically help me. These things I'll never know the answers to. And I did in the beginning try to figure it out. I did ask questions. I did try to like, and the people that work with him, he was locked in a conference room. There was nobody there. There was no cameras there. So their wow. guess was as good as mine. What was I going to do? What? Launch an investigation? <laughs> Something medically happened. I don't know what it was. I need to be, I need to have the kind of faith that I tell everybody else I have mm -hmm. and just resign myself to the fact that like, this was God's plan. Right. That's it. Right. All those questions, all those like, 
things that, what could I have done differently? What did he eat the night before? What did he drink? Why didn't he, how is it going to help? What good will it, right. What good will it bring me? Like, let's say I even know. Let's say I know. Yeah. He, like, was that going to help me? Is it going to help me? It will not help me. I know that for sure. That's one question right. I can answer. It will not help me. Right. He's not here. He's not coming back. Right. So now. So you just give into that. You like, you see the thoughts and you just say, okay, you're not going to help me move along. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do they get like quieter as time goes on? Yes, they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. They okay, that's do. good to know. That's, that's a, good to know. Such a relief. It's yeah. such a relief. Yeah. Definitely. Because you can obsess about it and then feel so. Oh weird. my God. In the beginning, all I did, it was like a broken record in my mm-hmm. head. It was like, I would go through like his, his, his morning, even though I never went through his morning before. I had no idea what the hell he did from hour to hour. Mm-hmm. All I knew that he like a workaholic. I had no idea what he did. But I was obsessively asking his coworkers, like, did you see him? Did he, did he hold his chest? Did he, was he breathing weird? Was he, they were like, he came into work. He went into the cup room, of coffee. <laughs> and it was locked. And then he didn't respond to an email. And that's when we had some idea of that. Something was because he responded to emails immediately. Immediately. Wow. So wow. that kind of stuff, that, that kind of stuff, I just sort of like, let it just like evaporate. Like they come, they hit me. And then I'm like, okay, you're going. You're leaving. I'm not, yeah. we're not talking about this right now. Because it's just going to get you stuck and frustrated. The and, There's no point. No. Right. Right. And I think that's an important lesson for everyone. Like sometimes we ask why, why, why certain things. And if we don't get answers and we won't, like sometimes we, there's no answers. There is there's no, no answer. answers. And we can hover over the why for a long time, but it will get us stuck. We can ask sometimes just to, because it's human nature to want to know. Curiosity is human nature, but yeah. we have to learn when to let go and say, okay, move along. It's not going to help me What anymore. happened? What happened? Well, God decided this was his time. <laughs> right. <laughs> when he was born, this was, as, right. this, was, this was the amount of time he was given. Right. And he did a hell of a lot in that time. He right. did more than people do with, with 120 years on this earth. He did. Wow. I said that to everybody at the Shiva. I was like, this man wow. slept on three, four hours of night of sleep. He, he didn't sleep. He didn't sleep because he had to constantly be producing. He had responsibilities for all of his employees. He didn't rest. He didn't rest. He constantly did. He did more work in 40 years than people do in 80. Wow. Maybe he knew. Maybe he knew. Wow. I don't know. What an honor to be married to such a man. What an yeah. honor. Wow. Yeah, he was an incredible, was an incredible wow. person. Yeah. Wow. Monkey, okay, thank you for sharing with us so much. And I, you, I gained so much wisdom, so much wisdom from you and a lot of courage to, to like take a deep breath and say, God leads the path. Absolutely. And we're not in the driver's seat as much as we think no. we are. And we just have to... We're just long for the ride. And it, it sometimes it's going to be really hard, really, 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 really hard, but we can get up and we can move forward. Absolutely. We can cry in the driveway like my P does with music. Yes. Find yes. the music that you like. Find your yeah. crying spot. Make sure you have with it. Waterproof eyeliner always. <laughs> I have the best one. <laughs> yes. Invest in yourself. Give yourself time. Absolutely. Give yourself space. Yes. Find something that you love to do to spend your time with that you can give. And not only grieve the pain and be in the pain constantly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So many lessons, so many lessons, Maki. Thank you for Thank sharing. You. Thank, Thank you. you. So much for me. Oh, it, it was really an honor. I feel like I know you well, even though like I just met you a two, two short months ago. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. It's really like, and it's amazing how I met you the week that I was obsessing about grief. And I wanted to ask you the last question that I ask everybody, which you kind of really answered a lot, of, a lot, but I want to hear it in a, like a sentence or two. Sure. What does hope mean to you? Oh my God, hope. Hope is the only thing that, 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 that keeps me, hope is everything. Oh my God. What does hope mean to me? That's a great question. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hope to recharge and, I, and a lot of people need hope in order to recharge. And I believe that with mental illness, sometimes all we have is hope to hold on to. Yeah. Hope. What hope means to me is that really every day that I live, every day that I've lived since this happened is based on hope. And every day that gets me through the day and I hope for a better day the next day, even when I regress a little bit, even when it's not the best day, you know, that hope that there'll be better times ahead is the one thing that drives me every day. 
from getting from point A to point B. Like it's, it's knowing it's that hope that like there'll be happier times, you know? And I think it's like everything. I think hope is everything. It's the, yeah. I would say that you're trying to say for me, knowing you for, um, uh, I don't usually, I'm not usually at a loss for words. I don't like sharing this question with people because I want to hear what they say, then they express it. I think what you're trying to say that for you, hope is that there's a continuation and it doesn't end now. Whatever I am doesn't end now. Of course that not. There's, there's, it's, it's one long journey and it's continuing. Yes. And every yeah. time you move a little bit forward. Right. So there was hope in a lot of a lot of my life post this happening. Um, and a lot of the things that fell into place, you know, once they started, once I started getting back to me and recognizing that I was still the same person as I was before. And I liked the same things and I disliked the same things that gave me hope that like, like I could be happy again, you know, like that gave me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, and, and, and yeah, I mean, I don't even know what the meaning of hope is. Do you, what is it? To me, hope is holding on that tomorrow, the sun can always come out tomorrow. If today's gloomy, tomorrow can be, every day the sun comes up. There's always a day with darkness because the sun always sets. Right. There are different places in the world that the sun sets after longer periods yeah. of time and sometimes right. shorter. Sometimes the day is only eight to nine hours of sunlight and the, the dark is so long. Sometimes it's six months in certain places that there's light and darkness. Right. And the same thing I think for me hope is that no matter how long the darkness lasts, the sun always comes up. Yeah. So you hold on to hope for when the sun will come up again. Yeah, for sure. That's great. That's great. That's how I see it. That's how I like visualize it for me when I need the hope that there's no day that ends because the sun always comes back tomorrow. Yeah. So you're right. So in the beginning, I hoped, I hoped that I'd be the person that I really became used to being because at my age, I finally started appreciating the person I was. And then after this happened, I thought to myself, am I going to lose all that? Is right. that going to be gone because of what happened to us? Right. And I started recognizing that like, I still had that same stuff that like, and so that was hope for me. Like, oh my right. gosh, you know, like, right. and then I thought to myself, I could go for other things. Right. And maybe that'll happen too. I could hope for, for a new chapter. I could hope for a husband. I could hope for, for happy children. I could hope for, you know, success in my life that I never anticipated. All mm -hmm. this is hope. Yeah. It's not dying with the death of a loved one. No. It's living no. after. Yeah. And creating life and yeah. moving on. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Malki. Wow. What a raw episode. What a raw episode, but it's going to help so many people just to, to really hold on for and dream big, dream big. Dream big. Yeah. And use your pains in order to bring out your capabilities. Absolutely. Use the pain in the best possible way, in the best way, because I think every single thing in life has a good and a bad everything, you know, and right. tragedy and the outcome of a tragedy doesn't all have to be bad. Right. There could be great blessings right. that result from tragedy. Yeah. And you're a role model in that. So thank you. Thank you. Where do people find you? Kiss the Kosher Cook on Instagram. Yes, my Instagram <laughs> handle. My Facebook page is Kiss the Kosher Cook. And I write a column in the Five Towns Jewish Times and it is online as well every week. And what's the column's yeah. name? It's not, there's no name of a cop. I don't have a name. I don't have a, so really the truth so is. How do they I, find it? What do you mean? It's on the front page of the paper. Oh, it's the front page. Okay. Always. Yeah, for okay. sure. I started okay. journaling after this happened and I started sending it to my, my therapist and my father. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My father happens to be an editor of the Five Towns Jewish Times. So he okay. said, would you mind if I published it? He started publishing it started getting a lot of feedback from people. And then he asked me like every week to like write a little, a little reflection, a little piece on, right. you know, whatever happened that week, whatever right. I was on your journey. So, yeah. 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 So check. So do you hang out both on Facebook and Instagram? Mostly Instagram. Mostly Instagram. Yes. Kiss the kosher cook. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And you'll see Smiley Malky there with her five cute kids. 
<laughs> Cute. And always something delicious cooking or yeah. displaying or on the way to be cooked. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much. And we'll see what I can't wait to hear the next chapter. I cannot yes. wait. Thank you. To see, and I know like amazing things, amazing things are coming. I can God feel bless. it. Thank yes, you. I can thank feel you. it. So guys, check Malki out. Kiss the kosher cook. You do not want to miss it. And um, she's very responsive and very giving and loving as you can hear. Thank you. Thank so you much. for joining me. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone, for joining us through this story. Malki, thank you for sharing with us. The incredible feedback that we're getting gives me goosebumps every single time. It's incredible how Malki's strength and courage to share her story and her ups and downs is giving others courage to walk through grief to look at grief differently, to embrace life again. It is unbelievable. We had over 1,400 listeners to just one part of the episode. I can't wait to see how many these are going to get. How many lives are going to be impacted by Malki? Unbelievable. Thank you, Malki. Thank you. I am thanking you for each and every one of the listeners and for me, for teaching me how to be brave, how to have courage, how to show up, how to live life to the max every single moment, even when it's hard. Guys, stay tuned because we are going to be dropping a 15 to 20 minute episode of Malki sharing her first part of life in a milestone in her own life that she walks through this milestone of her son's bar mitzvah, doing it full heartily without her husband by her side and the before the bar mitzvah, the during the bar mitzvah, the after bar mitzvah, all the emotions, all the thoughts, everything that comes with going through a big milestone in general, we do it with a loved one. What is it like to do the first milestone without your best friend, without your partner, without the father of your child. So we're going to be sharing this part in the next day or two. Stay tuned. It's going to be a bonus paid episode for those that want to gain from Malki. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for following us. Thank you for being part of the Hope to Recharge community where we bring one story at a time to break the stigma and to encourage people to move forward and create a better tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Bye till next time. Grief is universally one of the more powerful, intense emotions. Some people, whether due to trauma or conditions like borderline personality disorder experience all of their emotions on the more intense end of the spectrum, which can be challenging without some support and guidance. For those who frequently experience emotional dysregulation or emotional sensitivity, there is an online dialectical behavior therapy skills solution. Dialectical behavior therapy skills or DBT skills are essentially emotional coping skills. Check out EmotionallySensitive.com for more information. They have weekly online psychoeducational DBT skills groups attended by students around the globe and co-facilitated by a licensed DBT trained therapist and a DBT trained certified life coach who is in recovery from borderline personality disorder herself. Please visit EmotionallySensitive.com to learn more and ask any questions you may have about their next program, which starts on July 27th. Enrollment closes at noon Pacific on Sunday, July 26th. Again, visit us at EmotionallySensitive.com and we hope to have you in class with us very soon. Thank you for joining us and taking the time to listen. I really appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button so you can hear further episodes. If you are listening to us on iTunes, please leave feedback and ratings below. Let us know if there's any topic that you would like to hear from us in the future. Bye till next time.